Praise the Lord and God bless you this afternoon. It's good to know that you're watching me at this moment. It's good to know that you are uh, you're ready to study the Word of God in time like this. And I praise God for you. I'm glad that you are safe. And we are here tonight because uh, it's Bible study night. Amen. And so we want to thank God for you. This is Reverend Anderson uh, coming to you from Trinity Christian Tabernacle. 91 Elm Street, Danbury. I want to give God thanks for my pastor, Pastor Annick Bush, and all the believers from the deacons and clergy and members. I'm happy, amen, that even though we are not fellowshipping together due to this coronavirus, but listen to me, we are still here reaching out, studying the word together, amen. So, our lesson this afternoon. Is coming from Psalms, uh, Psalms, what do you call it? Uh, 2 from verse 1 to verse 12. Amen. But before I read it, I would just want to pray uh, that God will have his way this afternoon. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of the Lord, I thank you for this moment uh, of study. This moment, we ask that you will be in our midst and reveal yourself to your people and to myself as we observe your word to see how wonderful it is and why we should study your word in time like this in jesus name we pray amen and amen and amen praise god amen and the subject lesson or the topic would be the victory of the lord's anointed victory of the lord anointed victory of the Lord anointed. Amen. So here we see the lessons from verse 2 to 1. But before we get into that, uh, can we say the team verse? Second, taken from 2 Timothy 2 verse 15. And it said, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly divide the word of truth praise god psalms 2 verse 1 why do the egen rage and the people imagine vain things the kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the lord and against his anointed let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us that's what they said but hear what verse 4 said, He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, mean the Lord. The Lord shall have them in desertion. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. That is what God is saying. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son this day have I begotten thee. He's saying, Ask of me, and I shall give thee the Eden for thy inheritance, and the uttermost part of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the son, lest he be angry and he perish from the way. When his wrath is king, but a little, blessed are they that put their trust in him, in the Lord's anointed. So let us begin to look into the lesson. The lesson that you and I will observe this afternoon will give us a clear view to God's anointed, who he selected. Uh, or who is sent to represent him not just to a nation or a people although he came as the king of the jews but the whole world and that could state that shown in john 3 16 uh, but remember christ died for the whole world not just for a nation or a people so we want to look tonight on the lesson because the lesson established the fact that the Lord is the victorious king 
whose reign is eternal. Uh, it also teaches that though many have opposed him and many more will do so, no one can successfully overthrow our king, your king, my king, the world's king, because he is the king. So nobody can overthrow him, nobody can fight. So you invested, you are serving somebody who is dear that he's the great fighter general. Amen. Uh, and so to see the wisdom in serving the Lord willingly and joyfully instead of defying him. Praise God. Uh, let me give you a, 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 a little understanding on why this king, which is Jesus Christ, is the victorious or is the victory of the Lord's anointed. Amen. Uh, before the uh, the governing council in of elders in heaven, according to Revelation five five, from verse one. But when we look on Revelation five, uh, John the Revelator has received an interesting or significant revelation into uh, the time when the, 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 the choice was given uh, for someone to die or to unloose the seal. And based on John, John was so worried because uh, nobody was found worthy to, to open the book and to loose the seal. And it said in Revelation 5, 5, and one of the elders said unto me, said unto John, We not behold the lion of the tribe of Judea, the root of David, are prevailed to open the book and to loose the seal, or the seventh seal thereof. Signify, Jesus is the rightful ear to the throne of David, or David's throne, because what you see here, why he is victorious, uh, or the victory of the Lord's anointing. It is that he was selected before the foundation of the world. And those who opposed was found worthy to die. He was the Lamb of God. He was uh, preordained, pre-prophesied, amen, uh, foreshadow on earth, amen. And he is Jesus Christ, the one came right in. Uh, upon a donkey. Amen. And the people pulled down their garments and palm leaves and, 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 and put it in the street and said, Hosanna, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. Amen. So why they couldn't be successful? David questioned here uh, according to the development of the lesson. It said that the world's rebellion you know, uh, Psalms 2.1. The author of this Psalms, David, according to Acts 4.25-26, begin by asking incredulous why the nation of the earth rage against the Lord and is anointed. They, they plot against God with plans to attack and overthrow him, and David is amazed by, by the folly of such attempt. It is that when you understand who God is, the omnipresence everywhere, the omniscient, you know, omniscient mean is all knowing and omnipotent is all powerful. When you understand John 1 1, where Jesus said that, you know, he he, he is the beginning, he came to the, he's the word, he came in the world, amen. He, he, the world were made by him, the people were made by him, and he came and they don't even know him. But but he said, as many that receive him to them gave he power to become the sons of God. When you truly understand that Jesus Christ risen from the dead, why would you seek to fight against the Lord's anointed? No, uh, this that Jesus has been resurrected already, but this was uh, David's account, and that David was chosen uh, to be the king of Israel, in whom Jesus would would be here to David's throne because if you listen to what Revelation 5 said before David was even chosen Jesus was seen to be 
the, the, the lion of the tribe of Judea, the root of David, or prevailed to open the seal. So men on earth and kings rage because they thought of an earthly king, but God is both earthly and eternal king. Uh, but not only that, not only that uh, the Lord's anointing is victorious, but you too that have accepted Christ, that's what I want you to know, is also victorious. If you are the anointing of the Lord, you, you've been born again, received the Holy Spirit, amen, uh, your sins have been forgiven, and, and you are a child of God, you are the anointing of God. Let me give you an understanding why I said you are. Uh, this scripture or lesson based on uh, David, the earthly king, Jesus, the earthly king, and the eternal king that is above all the kings who rage, believing that Jesus is coming to take his, their throne. But Jesus was already selected before the foundation of the world. He is God's selection. He is the Son of God. But, but even though the lesser point to uh, David and to Jesus, let me point out to you that you are also a part of this great victory. Uh, now understand here that in Acts of the Apostle 3, uh, when Peter and John went down to the temple at the ninth hour, and this impotent man, this lame man, was laid at the gate. And the Peter says, Silver and gold are by now, but such as I have. And, and the anointing of God, and they, the man was healed. And when the man was healed, uh, the people could recognize it. Everybody could see the, uh, the power of God because these disciples were anointed by God. They were God's anointed. And when you are anointed by God, uh, people got to be very careful or they challenge uh, the anointing of God. Uh, you let better let your nay be nay or your yea be nay. So according to Acts 4, uh, it said that the, the passage of scripture reveal how the priests and the Sadducees captain uh, came upon the disciples. They were grieved that they taught the people and preached to the resurrection from the dead Jesus Christ. And so the council laid hand upon them and put them in jail for the night. But they seek to shut them up, the disciples. However, the ruler questioned them. And they found out that these people stood firm on what they believe, the name of Jesus. And so they asked them, and according to Acts 4, 8, Peter, who was filled with the Spirit, said, If they be examined of doing good deeds to an impotent man, who is made whole? Peter said, I want you to know it was done at the name of Jesus. So he was not afraid, just like Paul said in, in Romans 1, 16, that he's not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God to salvation. You and I should never be ashamed of the gospel, especially in time like now, because it is the power of God unto salvation. First uh, Peter 4, from 18 to 21, said the disciples were called and told not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of the Lord Jesus. The disciples said... They rather to speak the things of Christ than to be silent to the counsel of the Jewish. You see, the Jewish counsel. So uh, they were not afraid to speak the word because they were the anointed. When you are the anointed of God, just like David, all those kings and people who, who opposed David could not overthrow him because God selected him. You remember when God selected him, when he sent Samuel to anoint him as king because he, he saw him as a man of his own heart. When God called you and anointed you to, to be whether a prophet, a priest, to whether be uh, a husher, or to whether be a doorkeeper, or a leader, you, you may not suit the people. The people may not think that you, your outward appearance is okay for them, but understand this. God is the one who selected you, and 
they would be finding themselves challenging God if they come against you. That's what they did when when Herod sought in Matthew uh, to what you call it destroy Jesus, but he couldn't find him because God has protected him at all times. God find a way to uh, to save God his servant, and so. Uh, the message to you and hi this evening since we don't have a lot of time to go through this is to let you know that your king is victorious amen because he is the lord anointed he's the son of god and he came to die on the cross and then not only that but he's coming back to set up his kingdom here on earth uh, you call that the second advent his second coming amen but not only that you and I have been anointed believers and has given an assignment to let the world know that Jesus is coming back again. And so the message you and I have to receive is to deliver concerning Jesus, his death, his burial, and his resurrection and his second coming. And that people must believe in him and accept him as their Lord and Savior so that they will flee the rod which is to come. Remember John 3, 17, for God sent not his son in the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The theme of the Bible, it's about Jesus Christ. We don't need to put in any sweet, uh, what do you call it, uh, type of things in there to, 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 for people to see us. It's not about us. It's about Jesus who came, who died on the cross, who resurrected to give life, to give eternal life uh, to people. And so you and I have been given the, the hope and the message of salvation to tell the world that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Uh, so we should not be quiet. We should not be silent. We must run with the good news. Amen. Praise the Lord. So while the world rebel, it's for you to be firm and tell them the message of salvation. Amen. Amen. The Lord respond. David convey an important insight about the Lord. He does not merely reign from Jerusalem, but sits enthroned in heaven and reigns over everything. The Lord who rules from heaven laughs at the foolishness and the fruitless attempt of human king to supplant him to so to 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 supersede Jesus to replace him nobody can replace him he was seen as king of kings and lord of lord come on believers we want the world to know that you must study the word because you want the believers to know that amen the the lord covenant according to psalms 2 7 through 9 the decree mentioned in verse 7 refers to the david david covenant instituted in 2 Samuel 7 in which God declared that he would be the father to the human king of Judea. Hebrew 1 5 said however combined to Psalms 2 and 7 and 2 Samuel 7 14 show that Jesus is the ultimate fulfillment of that decree. That decree for he is the unique and only true son of God, the rightful heir to David's throne. He is the Messiah, the Lord's anointed one, and he will reign forever. Jesus is more than just a, uh, what you call it, an appointed king, human king. He is God's son. God did not send merely human king to represent him before the world. No human king person could represent Christ because we are all come short of the glory of God. And we would mess up and, and the Bible today would have, uh, what do you call it, a confusion. Amen. People would depict it. But Jesus was so perfect in his outline. Nobody could find any fault with him. He stood before the high priest and, 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 and even uh, one of them said, I could not find no fault with him, Pilate, and wash his hand. Amen. He was brought as the lamb, but he speak the things of God. Remember when he was at 12 years of age and, and his Mary found him 
amen, speaking to lawyers and doctors, and they were astonished uh, at his, uh, uh, at the word coming from his mouth, because he is the word, the word which came from heaven, the word who bruised the head of the serpent, the cornerstone, the, the, the stone that the bill rejected. Come on, believers, listen to me. You have made the right choice by accepting Jesus Christ uh, as your Lord and Savior. And so, in my closing tonight, I want you to, to be bold in your approach, to tell the world that the king that you represent, you are representing to them, there is no failure in God. He never fails. He's coming back. You see, the, the grave couldn't hold him down. He got up with power. That means death. That is what many are afraid of, but you and I should have hope in the resurrection. God has already determined uh, to hand the nation over to his anointed one. And the nation of the earth can do nothing to prevent that. Those who uh, trust in him, amen, will have the victory. Amen. I'm so glad tonight as I as I am speaking to you, oh God, that the Lord is our refuge and strength and he is a present help in time of trouble. Let us tell the world, believers, that Jesus Christ, let us be like Paul, like Peter, I rather to obey God. And today men want us to be silent. It is the demons in men. But listen to me. Jesus your anointed one, your king, your savior, was victorious. He is victorious. He's waiting for you uh, to be an overcomer so that he can give you your reward. I hope you enjoy this uh, few lesson, this lesson this afternoon, because listen to me, I enjoy it and I trust that God will help you to be bold in your approach and let the world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. And so we hope that if someone that have not accepted Jesus been been listening to this uh, broadcast and understand that, you know, Peter, in uh, when, when the day of Pentecost and when the Holy Spirit came upon them and they begin to uh, tell the people who were there that this was the Messiah, the people found out that they missed the opportunity and they said, what must we do to be saved? And Peter said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, the word uh, Romans 10 verse 8 and uh, 9 it said the word is nigh you my unsaved friend if you are watching uh, that if you would believe in your heart that you are a sinner that God has sent Jesus Christ that he is the victorious and the the anointed king that will rule one day and you want to be in that place where there will be peace and no more sorrow and pain and death and not the this thing that we see happening today in this world but you will be in a place where Jesus will be the king and as I said he will be ruling with peace amen no more sorrow or takes some place you could lay down in your bed amen that's what we want to tell the world that we have hope in Jesus so tonight I want to pray for you that have not accepted Christ that you may give him a chance in your life and believers I want you to hold fast uh, the unchanging word of God be movable uh, stand firm always abound in the work it's not time to get lazy nor slouchful nor sluggish nor dormant it's time to arise because our Savior is victorious amen and and he's coming back amen to take you to be with him let us pray thank you lord father in the name of the lord i pray for those who have heard your word those who sit and listen to the few minutes of of your word that jesus christ is the anointed one selected and sent and the world wondered and everybody thought he's going to take the opportunity but he came because he was uh, the chosen one and today he is the highest the greatest uh, and the mighty giver of our salvation bless each and every one tonight god and i pray that your word minister and increase their faith to let them know there is no failure in god save us so Oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and help them to uh, to be rescued from the penalty of death and come to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord and our Savior Amen I'm open and trusting that you be safe and that you continue to follow the guidelines 
we are trusting that none of you will be defeated. You will live and not die. This is Reverend Anderson. God bless you tonight. Have a good day and be safe. See you next time. Same time. In Jesus' name. Amen.